What's up guys, Quizzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this paintbrush logo or text um, effect in Illustrator and Photoshop. Now I know I've been uploading a lot of Wix videos recently because I'm working with them to create like a little tutorial series and I have more of those videos on the way but I know for a lot of you guys it's not your thing, you guys want more design based stuff. So I'm going to be having a few of those come out the next couple of weeks before the next round of Wix videos including this. I also have a animated webcam tutorial that kind of goes along with this. It's like in the same style. But um, anyways, this is what we're going to be creating and we're going to be doing so in the new versions of Illustrator and Photoshop CC 2019 and it's pretty easy. All you, all, The most difficult part is creating your shape for the logo or text. Like this isn't really a logo it's like it's just an L but like you I could have gone on with like a full text thing that spelled out whatever word I was going for um, but again you guys can use this for anything it doesn't even have to be letter I use mine for um, a face cam um, outline and you can really use anything it's really easy and once you get the method down you can imply apply it to a lot of different things anyway let's go to illustrator and get started so this is what we're going to be doing in Illustrator, and you can see we have a few different things on the outside that I will be creating um, as we go. But let's go ahead and create a new file, and we're going to make this 2000 by 2000, and we're going to go ahead and hit create. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and grab this and bring it over because this is the shape I'm going to be using. Um, you guys obviously either will have a shape you know or like a logo um, or you can trace over a font you like or something um, but you want to have some sort of guide to follow for your letter or logo or whatever you're making so I'm making this L I'm going to come over to my layers panel and create a new layer on this locked layer that I'm tracing whether it's a drawing um, some text I found whatever you can use anything you really want and let's go ahead and get the pen tool hit none here so there's no fill and you just want a black stroke make sure the stroke is black or like a visible color now yours will be set to basic here um, you won't have this brush effect that I do right now but anyways you want to come in and start following your shape in like the middle of it um, if you're unfamiliar with the pen tool you just click hold and drag um, command Z to go back and extend out cool once you finish your path you can just command click off and you'll have your path I'm gonna go ahead and hide that bottom locked layer so we just have this so we have our path now let's go in to this um, setting on the brush definition and we want to choose this watercolor brush that I used now I don't know if this came with Illustrator or I downloaded a pack a while ago. I think I downloaded a pack, so I will link a download to that so you guys can get this and install it. Um, I'm pretty sure these are easy to install. I think you just come here and other library or something to load them in. Um, if it's not simple, I'll put a little text describing how to do this or link some sort of tutorial so you guys know how to install this. But anyways, if you come down to this library mark, click that and go to artistic watercolor you'll get these watercolor brushes to pop up now you can use any one of these really to follow along with this but I'm gonna be using the one I know that works which is watercolor 5 I guess I believe this is it if you hover over it and just let your mouse sit there it should say yeah watercolor stroke 5 I'm gonna hit the X and I'm just gonna increase the stroke size until I get something I like and I think 7 um, seven point stroke will work. You can also come over here to where it says uniform uniform, and you can change um, the width so if you want something thinner at the end like that or maybe something like this you could do um, that one as well get like a thicker a loop there but I think 
I will go with just the uniform one. And you can see how, like, where this is going now. Like, you can see this is pretty similar to what the final product is, minus the color. Um, but what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna alt, I'm gonna alt and click and drag off the canvas just to have a duplicate. And then select the one we're working with. Go to Object, Expand Appearance, Object Expand. And now we don't have a path anymore. We have a bunch of individual shapes. Now we want to go ahead to the gradient and give it some color. So let's click the gradient. We'll get a black to white gradient on all these individual shapes. You can see it's looking pretty neat. Let's select that and select radial gradient. You can also play with the angle here, but I'm just going to leave mine at zero. And you can pick your color. So I'm going to do a dark bluish purple and a lighter blue. Like that. And you can see I have, um, like, a, I put a lighter blue second because for whatever reason on this, um, the lighter blue will stand out more if it's second. Now, depending on your shape, I don't know if that will work every time, but, like, play around. You might have to, jig, uh, you might have to drag this in to get more of the brighter color. And I'd say play around so you get more of the brighter color. And, yeah, so you can see there's a lot of bright blue over here and uh, up here. Now this isn't fully 100% opacity because it's watercolor, it's a little dim, so we're going to have to duplicate this a few times. So select it and hit Command C and Command F once, twice, and three times. So we have something like this. Now if we go ahead and select that all, all of these will be connected into one rather than four individual layers. So press Command C to copy that whole thing together and go to Photoshop. Create a new layer in Photoshop uh, and do not create it the size of the clipboard. You want to create a new one. I will do 2000 by 2000. Now obviously if we go to Photoshop it will no longer be a vector so if you want the vector I recommend finishing this out in Illustrator which if you're comfortable in Illustrator that works great but I know a lot of my audience isn't because we are Photoshop people. Um, once you come to Photoshop, hit Command V and click OK and hit Enter to have that there. Come back or go back to um, Illustrator and what you want to do is take this whole thing, drag it off to the side, click off of it and then hit Alt and click on that and bring it back so you should get one of those layers duplicated and back on your canvas. You can tell it is not the whole thing because again, the opacity isn't completely at 100%. It's a little dim. Now what we want to do is select it, go to Window Pathfinder, or like I have Pathfinder over here, and I'm going to click the first mode to Unite. You can see we get this radial gradient. Um, now this is an optional step. If you don't have Adobe 2019 you could just leave it as a radial gradient and then skip to where I bring it to Photoshop but if you have the new version of um, Illustrator you can come to the gradient and do this new freeform gradient and what we're gonna do is change all the colors to one of the colors we're using I'm just gonna select the dark blue everywhere and I'm going to bring that like more towards the bottom, more towards the bottom, and more towards the bottom. And then I'm going to click, double click on it to change color, and use the brighter blue. There, maybe there, there, and at the tip. And maybe let's get a darker one and put it in a couple other places. And let's get a bright one and put it at the end here. All right, so I don't know if you got that, but if you click a dark one and then click somewhere else, that'll make a dark one wherever you click. Um, and you can do that and play around with uh, gradients at different spots. I just mixed it up so it was in random places and you get something like this. Now select that and copy it and go to Photoshop and paste it. 
Now this should align perfectly with the one we just copied in there. And all you want to do is come here and set that to 45% opacity, or you could set it to overlay, which I think I'm going to do here. Or rather, you can put it at 45% opacity and leave it at normal or overlay, whichever one um, you prefer. Now we're going back to Illustrator. You can set this to the side or delete it up to you. And again, we're going to hit Alt, click and drag one of these ones over to our canvas. This time we're going to select it and right click, ungroup, click off, select, right click, ungroup. And then you want to keep going until it's no longer ungrouped. And I think we should be grouped. Yeah, there we go. You can see all these are now individual pieces. So what I like to do is come through and select a bunch of these small pieces um, throughout the letter or whatever we're using and try to get them on different areas. Uh, we'll do that. A couple of these here, maybe an end piece, that one, and we got some over here. That's, that's pretty good, that should be enough. So select a few of those, copy them, and go back to Photoshop, paste them. Try to get um, the small ones, don't get the big ones yet. Um, come back here and do it again. Try not to use the same shapes you just picked, but it's fine if you do. And select a couple more. And like, don't get these big ones that go almost entirely throughout, try to mix it up. Or, and just try to get this, the, the smaller ones that aren't really in the middle, probably are more on the outside. That's pretty good. Let's copy that and go to Photoshop, paste it again. And then go back to Illustrator and this time we can select some of the bigger ones. All right, there we go. And again, copy and go back to Photoshop and paste them. Now you wanna hide those first two and sorta of align the second one. Now, you don't have to align it perfectly. In fact, sometimes the effect will look better if you don't. So you could Command T, rotate it a little bit, um, expand it a little bit, or do whatever. Um, it does not have to be perfect though. I'm just gonna kinda offset mine down a little bit make the second one visible bring that one over and that's pretty good and then the third one bring that one over okay and if we select all of these and right click rasterize that'll be perfect let's go to the third layer here and we're gonna press command U on that and since mine is predominantly blue, well it is blue, um, I wanna use a nice color that works with blue. So I'm gonna change this to a green and I want it to be more of a mint green. So somewhere right here. And I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave the saturation alone. Hue is negative 50, click okay. I'm gonna go to the one above that, command U, and go a little further than negative 50, maybe more to a yellow green. like so, maybe negative 114. Click OK, go to the top one, Command U, and this time we're gonna go the opposite way and get a little bit darker version of our color. Um, so this blue will look good with some purple. So plus 15, click OK. Now you can come here to the layer mask um, on any one of these layers. So the second one, I'm gonna come in and add a layer mask, have black selected, get a soft brush and just come in here and erase some of these um, bits and yeah sure that's fine if there's a lot of overlap or one color is not prevalent enough you can go ahead and do that uh, to make sure some of the other colors come out so maybe I want and uh, that's not really gonna help but I do want oops you want some of this gone at the top and that's pretty good so go ahead and add layer masks and make any touch-ups you want 
Uh, come down to the bottom most layer and double click on that. Go to gradient overlay, select black to white at a uh, 90 degree angle. Make sure the white's at the top. So I got to reverse mine so the white's at the top. Do overlay and overlay about 39%. Click OK. Now the final step is to add a little bit of a glow. So if you select all of this, Command G to group it, and then Command J to duplicate, and then Command E to merge. This will now be one layer. If we go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, we can do about seven pixels of blur. You can actually go further, um, maybe nine. We'll do 10, let's, let's go crazy. Click OK, set that to screen and decrease the opacity a little bit. Maybe down in like the low 30s, that's, I think that's all right, about 33. And then finally, if we go down to our, um, if we go down to our effects, we can click hue and saturation and bump the saturation up a little bit. Uh, maybe go back down there and do a vibrance and up that saturation, maybe forget that other saturation. And just bump this up until it looks good to you. So that's pretty solid, and I think I like that. And basically, that is how you go about making that painted looking logo. Um, so it's pretty similar to the one that I originally created. You can mix up the colors even more, you can add more colors. Um, that step where we go ahead and paste them in here and change the color, you can do that um, as many times as you want, add as many colors as you want, make a complete rainbow, do whatever, um, you can mess with the background then, see what looks good. But that is the tutorial guys, I'm going to be coming out with a tutorial in a similar way, that's a face cam that's animated, um, or some sort of face cam that's animated tutorial soon. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. Feel free to download um, my Illustrator and Photoshop files down in the description for free. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.